So, I've just come back from a retreat with some fellow keynote speakers, and I'm just a little bit excited about the business building ideas I've got to share with you. Not to mention today's guest, who's building a shoelaces empire. Yep, shoelaces. Let's do this. Welcome to the Small Business Big Marketing Show, where successful small business owners share their secrets to take your marketing to the next level. Now, here's your host, Tim Reid. Welcome back, listeners, to another episode of Australia's number one marketing show. I am your host, Timbo Reid, but you, so much more importantly, are a motivated small business owner ready to crank out. That's it. Crank out some great marketing. Bit pumped today. I'm keeping a bit of a lid on it though, because I'm at home and so is the rest of my family. Three children, wife, dog. Often I record uh, episodes when everyone's out. I can be a little bit more, how shall we say, loud, excited. But you know what they do? When I go downstairs after I've recorded and they have been home and I have been loud and excited, they take me off. They impersonate me. So instead of going, hey, Dad, they go, hey, Timbo Reed, I'm a motivated business owner. Yeah. In, the, in Australia, we call that taking the piss. If you're not in Australia or New Zealand and you don't know what I mean, you may need to look that up in some kind of colloquial dictionary of sorts. Anyway, big show today, team. Uh, interesting guest. Interesting guest. I've got a laces nerd. Yeah. Uh, I've got a bit of a whinge up front. Not about, the, not, not about the laces nerd, just something which I think will be close to your heart. I've been away for a couple of days planning and I want to share some insights with you. Feeling very motivated, very grateful um, and very excited. Uh, what else we got? A little bit of an insight uh, into the forum, the Small Business Big Marketing Forum. Got to love that. And plenty more. Oh, marketing. Marketing quote of the week, hey? Marketing show. Might as well have a marketing quote. Let's get stuck right in. Small Business Big Marketing with Tim Reid. Smallbusinessbigmarketing.com. I think I'll start with getting the whinge out of the way. Before I hit the record button today, I had a paddle pop. Yeah, no, that's probably another Australian type product that isn't available overseas. It's an ice cream. It is an ice cream that has been with us forever. Uh, Grew up with paddle pops. Now, I know I have got bigger over the years in terms of height and sometimes in terms of size. However, this paddle pop was tiny. It was tiny. It's like I'm holding the stick. It isn't even as long as my index finger. And the ice cream itself, Small. I think products are getting smaller. Other examples, Polly Waffles. That's, I think that's probably an Australian chocolate bar as well. I don't know. Um, I reckon chips, chips, which Americans, you call them crisps, lots of air in the bag. I don't know. I get let down when I buy an ice cream these days or a bag of chips, which doesn't happen too often. But when I do, I am reminded. Have you noticed that? Yeah? A products? What products in your mind are getting smaller or are full of more air, hey? Come on, manufacturers, lift your game. If you are noticing this and I'm not alone, leave a comment in the show notes of episode 221. Now, a show like this isn't made possible without the support of the very good folks at Net Registry, and they are all about getting your business sorted online, Right? I love this quote, are you online or have you just got an average website? So many small business owners that I come across think, you know, yeah, I've got a bit of a a website, it's okay, I'm online. No, you're not. A, it's average and B, you've got to cover other bases. Having an average website is not being online team at all. That's where the guys at Net Registry can help you. Yeah, they can help you take your average website to an amazing website. They do domain hosting, domain name registration, website design, development, all that stuff, but they do search engine optimization as well. So you can get found on Google. They do pay-per-click ads, you know, Facebook ads, Google ads, all that type of stuff, and they can do your social media setup. So if you really want to be online, if you really want to optimize your digital footprint, head over to netregistry.com.au and tell them Timbo sent you. Okay, so I've just come back from two days up at Noosa. 
in Queensland, Australia. And it was a retreat attended by seven other keynote speakers plus myself. And it was wonderful. We sat around a table for two days and shared what's working for us and what's not working for us. We exchanged knowledge. We just had a really, really solid two days of planning our businesses for the coming 12 months. It was amazing. I was so honored to be sitting around this incredible table of speakers, some of who have been in the industry for decades, uh, others who are relatively new to it, but are making a real go of it. And boy, oh boy, what an exchange of knowledge. Just absolutely incredible. And I, I actually feel so grateful for being invited to that table, having the opportunity to be there, and for I, I've just come back with just like a mountain, a mountain of knowledge. And I want to share some of it with you. So what I'm going to do pre today's interview, I'm going to share five little secrets, tips, insights, if you want to call them that, that I took away from the retreat. And then after the interview, I'll share with you another five. So this episode may go for just that little bit longer, but I think it is going to be worth every additional second that we spend together today. Because you know what? I want to build your business. I really do. I want your business to shine, to glow. I want you to jump out of bed two hours early and get stuck in to building it with some great marketing. Yeah? So let me share some of the things that we spoke about. It might be a quote, might be a might be an idea, might be a tip. Um, they're all kind no, no particular theme around it except they're all business building ideas. Number one tip from the speakers retreat. And by the way, there's more than 10. I reckon I've come away with about 150, but hey, we ain't got that long together. Number one tip, activity beats inactivity. What we, that, where that came from was we were talking about, you know, what should we do to generate more business? And often we can find ourselves inactive and not actively doing business generating things. So one of them, and I won't mention names here, one of, one of the attendees said activity beats inactivity every day of the week. And the suggestion was make seven calls a day, five days a week. Yeah? Seven calls a day, five days a week. I've been doing that for the last day since I've been back, and it is already working. It could be calls to past clients, might be calls to current clients, it might be calls to colleagues who think you might, who may be able to introduce you to someone else, might just be calls asking people how they're going, but just continue to be active and particularly on the phone. We live in such a virtual world these days. Number two, introduce people in depth. One of the fellows there, uh, when he introduced people uh, to one another, he did it in such a loving and beautiful way. Instead of going, you know, oh, John, meet Sue, and that was it, he'd say, hey, John, I'd like, you int- I'd like to introduce you to Sue. This is what she does. This is what she's great at, and this is what I like about her. And he really went into some detail each time he introduced someone to someone else. And I was a recipient of that, and it was such a great way to start a conversation with someone you didn't know after being introduced to them. So why don't you make a habit, I certainly am, of going into greater depth when introducing someone to a friend, a colleague, a client of yours next time. Love that one. Tip number three, I like this one too. Always have a word that sets your direction. I noticed a number of the speakers around this table had a word that they, it was like they, they, they I often heard them say, oh, my word for 2014 was generous, or my word was um, no, you know, the power of saying no, or my word is fun or decisive. But they had a word, and that word drove all their key decisions throughout the year. I'm liking that. I'm working on what my word is right now. Um, And it doesn't have to be for the whole 12 months, but it's great to have that word and it acts as a filter for all the decisions that you're confronted with throughout the day, throughout the week. Tip number four, 
increasing your fee, we got talking about pricing, increasing your fee is all about adding value, okay? So as a speaker, some of the things that I do to add value uh, when a client calls me, a prospect calls me to speak, um, and this is not just about speaking, by the way. I mean, translate, translate exactly what I'm sharing here into your business. Um, I add uh, a Q&A webinar three weeks after the event at which I'll speak. I'm happy to do a video, an introductory video that the client can share with the conference delegates um, in the weeks leading up to the conference. I'm happy to do worksheets. I'm happy to do meet and greets. So not just turn up to the event and speak, but actually um, do meet and greets with sponsors or with attendees during the breaks. And all these things have high value, but they don't cost me a lot, right? And that's where the magic is, you know, high perceived value to the client at, 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 at generally a low cost to you. Sure, there'll be some value add ideas where the uh, there will be a significant cost to you, but it is all about adding value and being able to charge what you think you're worth versus discounting. Uh-uh. You know where that leads? That, my friends, is a one-way street. So that's a bit, a bit about value add and um, increasing your fee. Tip number five before we move on, and we'll come back to these later. When you're busy, you have no time to create. So this was interesting. Someone asked, you know, where do, where do we all get time to be creative to, to create the next big thing in our business? Um, are you doing that? If you're not, probably should. Um, some of the ideas was to diarize creative time, literally block out chunks of time in your diary, and that is creative time. Um, get away. Get away from your workplace, from any any environment that you associate with work, and and fully focus on being creative. And before you do any of that, acknowledge that you are creative. We are all creative by nature. So don't sort of go, oh, I'm not creative. None of that's for me. I'll just keep plodding on. No, don't. Acknowledge that you are creative. Set aside some time in your diary. Get out of your office and go and create. If that means booking three days at a, at a resort down the road or up the coast or where, whatever it is, do it. Be creative because creativity leads to new things, leads to rebirth, leads to, who knows, a new product, a new offering, a new business model, who knows? Hey, there's, there's five of the things that I learned at the Speakers Retreat. I will share another five after today's interview. Quick one, guys. Small Business Big Marketing Forum is alive and well. There are so many motivated business owners in there. We talk about marketing every day. You know what? Join. <laughs> that simple. If you have a marketing question, one marketing question a month, and you go in there and ask and get it answer, ask it and get it answered. Ha! You are going to get your money back in spades, just like all the other members are day in day out. Don't look at it as a time suck. You haven't got time for it. It doesn't have to take time. Become a member. It's a place. Look at it as a marketing insurance. Yeah. When you've got a marketing conundrum, you can join the forum. Head over to crankmymarketing.com. Righto, let's get stuck into today's guest. He is a shoelace nerd, self-professed shoelace nerd nonetheless. His name is Luke Schokenecht. It's a tough name to pronounce, but I got it, I think. And you can hit him up on Twitter at Mavericks Laces, M-A-V-E-R-I-C-K-S, Laces uh, on Twitter. And uh, tell him you heard him on the show. I'm trying to push that angle a bit more, guys. I love you. I'm seeing a lot of you saying hello to my guests on Twitter and copying me on it. My Twitter, at Timbo Reed, R-E-I-D dot, uh, dot com, at Timbo Reed. That should do it. Uh, that'd be cool. Now, let me tell you a little bit about Lukey. He hit me up. He's a long-time listener of the show, actually. But what I like about him, he's a graphic designer and brand consultant who was keen to start up with his business partner, a business that showed off their wares, their expertise in that area. This was a bit like the girls at Frank Body Scrub did exactly the same. I love it when um, when designers or, um, or, or business consultants do this kind of stuff because they're walking their talk. Um, in his intro to me, he says he loves shoes and he was spending far too much money on good kicks. Yeah, wow. Young people of today, 
spending three, four, five hundred bucks on a pair of kicks. What's going on there? I'm still getting around in my Dunlop volleys. <laughs> no, I'm not. No, Don, Dunlop KT26s. Got to love those ones. Now, uh, he goes on to say, we thought shoelaces were a cheap entry uh, product, but we wanted to do something different. And he uh, gave birth, in a kind of roundabout way, to coloured shoelaces, and they're called Mavericks laces. Three things happened within the first few weeks of doing it. How's this? He couldn't believe how many comments people were making about them and asked where they could get them. The coloured laces made their shoes look different every time they wore a different colour and transformed their shoes, hey, to the point that they felt like renegades. Hey, got me yellow laces on my blue shoes. I feel like a renegade. I love that. I love the fact that you can make something out of nothing, make any product interesting, and that's what this interview is all about. So uh, Luke and his business partner went ahead. They continue to have a brand consultancy and design business, but they went ahead and launched Mavericks Laces to some wonderful, wonderful success, and they've got some wonderful marketing insights to share. So I started by asking Luke... How much does he really love shoes? I do love shoes. Uh, my business partner probably loves shoes a bit more than I do. He's got a bigger shoe collection than any female I've ever seen. Wow. And well, how, like, how many so, are we talking? Uh, probably 20, 20 plus, 30 maybe. Uh, yeah, I was kind of expecting to hear 100 or you know something ridiculous, but that's, yeah, yeah, that's a lot quite, of shoes. But... But some of these are you know sort of handmade English Shoes that cost you up to the three hundred bucks, so yeah, right. <laughs> it's pretty pretty impressive. <laughs> what are you, what are your favourite pumps? Um, I love a brand called Grenton's um, in the UK. They make beautiful all leather Goodyear welted shoes, and also just like you know, your Nike sort of sneakers and that sort of stuff as well. So your Grenton's are, are they a brogue or are they? Yeah, so mainly sort of brogues and Oxfords and Derby shoes and all that sort of stuff, but beautiful sort of yeah, like I said, handmade. Lovely leather finish, and yeah, they're just a beautiful, high quality shoe that'll last you, you know, ten years plus if you look after them. Grinsons, Grinson, yeah, yep. I have to look them up. Yeah, in the UK, they're doing quite well. The guy who runs it, um, Tim Little, I think his name is. He used to be the head of Adidas at one stage, so right. he knows what he's doing. He knows what he's doing. Yeah. Now you, you're freaking me out. I want to talk about the Mavericks laces story, but you are freaking me out if you've. Listen to a number of my shows, uh, you may know that I struggled to figure out whether to match my socks with my shoes or my pants, and now you're suggesting I match my laces with my shoes. Um, there's an element of anxiety starting to creep into all this. <laughs> we call that colour anxiety. People can't decide what laces to choose. It is amazing. There's so, many, so, many, so much choice. We've got about 12 different colours, I think, at the moment of our shoe laces. And people just freak out when we do um, some market stores sometimes to actually sell the laces to people because we're at an online store. Mm. It's the only opportunity we get to actually talk to customers. And people get sort of two to three pairs in their hands and they just freak out and just take one because they can't decide out well, of which well, three they want. So. It's kind of interesting because, I mean, let's cut to the chase there. Um, I, I, I do want to ask you where the idea came from. But just, sure. just on that point, that is a blockage to sale. Um, you totally. th- three, three products in the hand, three uh, units in their hand, they buy one. You'd prefer yep. they buy three, but they're not buying three because – uh, they're confused. Um, you That's do right. you do a really good job on your website of educating people on how to um, tie laces. You've got lacing styles. Uh, yep. I love that page. It plays right into my concept of helpful marketing. I've got a couple of tips for you there. Remind me in a minute. Um, Fantastic. But um, I'm not sure. Maybe you do. But is there a place where you do say, "Hey, listen." This is this is your colour matching kind of space. It's it's coming soon. Coming so soon. The way we remedied Under the problem. Yeah, exactly right. The way we sort of dealt with the problem in the meantime was we sort of I guess hand pick five or seven laces and, and make them into a pack, so people can just buy a five pack of laces of the best selling colours or a three pack um, of the blue colours, so they don't have to make as much choice and choose on their own three to five laces. Mm-hmm. They can just buy a pre uh, made pack. Which has done really well, but we do have yeah under development a uh, sort of colour science page. A bit like is, uh, bit like Julux, you know, like the paint companies where they exactly yeah exactly like that, and where you can choose your shoe and a picture of the shoe will come up. You can change the colour of the shoe, then you can change the colour of the laces. 
If you like the combination, you hit add to cart and bang, there you go. Ah, so. uh, Lukey, you are onto this, mate. This is great. <laughs> yeah, that's I mean, where I, it's at. I, I love the fact, what, what drew my attention to stories like Maverick Laces is the fact that, and I, I say this lovingly, you, you've made something out of nothing. Oh, right? 100%. I mean, shoelaces have been around forever, and people have made coloured shoelaces before. You can probably buy them on the super, supermarket shelf for about 50 cents to a dollar, but mm-hmm. there's no emotion. Ah, uh-huh. um, there's no personality in those uh-huh. in, the, in the functional objects. So that's all we've done is just elevate it to, I guess, an art form and something that has emotion and personality with it. And people want to connect with that and have an emotional connection to things that they use every day. So. And and therein lies the magic of marketing. Exactly Creating right. Creating emotion. Exactly. I mean, if you don't have an emotional connection with your audience, then no one cares about you. So you're in big trouble. Oh, Lee, I get a little bit of uh, I get a little bit of emotional myself when we start talking <laughs> like this. Uh, this is kind of like soft porn for marketers. <laughs> yeah, exactly <laughs> right. <laughs> so, so let's talk about that. So, you guys, there's three of you in this brand called Maverick Lace, Maverick's Laces, yeah. um, graphic designers slash brand consultants. And there's a similarity here between you and a past guest, um, the, girl, the girls from Frank Body Scrub. Very, um, yeah, very similar. You, yep. you know, you've got a branding slash design agency and you thought, you know what, uh, we, we should walk our talk. Let's put our money and, and, and ideas where our mouth is and, and see what we can do to bring a product to life. And is that kind? And you decided on laces. Is that what happened? Exactly what's happened, yeah. I mean, we did want to walk the talk, and uh, I guess we're giving our clients lots of great ideas, and sometimes they just don't listen to you. So we thought, let's uh, <laughs> give ourselves a forum to just, I guess, prove to ourselves as much as anything that what we're saying is right, that drench brand in, in personality and have fun with the brand, and people will, will love it and engage with it. And uh, we've learned a hell of a lot from doing it as well that we can pass on to our clients in the future. So it's been yeah, a great experience. Oh, it's, it's, it's gold. I mean, I even find that with my podcast when I'm talking to someone who wants to book me for a speaking gig and there's a particular topic they want to cover, I can direct them to an episode and say, hey, listen, you know, I've covered that in this episode. And, and likewise, if you're talking about a point of branding or a point around marketing or design, you can actually cite an example from your business, from Maverick Laces. Laces. Business. Exactly like... right. And and show the clients where we've been on your side of the fence. We've oh, been our own clients yeah. running a business with, you know, the demands of financials and all those things. We're not just sort of talking pie in the sky stuff. We are running a business as well, so we understand the commercial imperatives, but you still gotta be creative and have fun and, and push things. So yeah, it just gives us credibility, I guess. And like I said, it's just been a great experience and a hell of a lot of fun so far. So. So, so you guys were sitting around going, okay, we, we should have a product of our own beyond just providing design and branding services. Exactly. Um, tell, us about, tell me about that time. Where, were there a whole lot of ideas you put up or were laces the um, obvious one straight up? I, th- I think we all liked, uh, like shoes, basically. We all love shoes. We're spending a lot of money on shoes. So we said, let's do something around sort of men's fashion to do with uh, footwear. Uh, we thought shoes, you know, there's obviously lots of shoe labels and um, lots of brands out there and we like most of them, so we didn't feel a need to sort of disrupt that market, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, we looked at socks and there's sort of happy socks and a few brands doing some really great stuff around that. And then Jade and I texted each other one time at the exact same moment saying laces. Like, Get you know, out of here. The exact same moment saying laces. I don't know what must have been going on in the universe that day, yep. but that's what happened. And, um, yeah, I remember seeing a guy one time at a cafe wearing coloured shoelaces and he was a sort of really uh, sort of top dog business looking guy at a business lunch. He's clearly sort of the head of the table and he was running the show and he looked wearing a really nice suit, looked very professional. I remember seeing him lean back and put his uh, leg over his knee and he's had these bright as purple laces on his black shoes. And I just thought that was really great. So Did you talk to sort him? Of, no, I didn't actually. Mm-hmm. It just sort of, I don't know, I, just, I must have just taken it in at the time. Mm-hmm. And then it just sort of came back up as a memory later on when we talked about shoelaces. So we said, coloured laces, that's it. Let's bloody do it. So we got some samples made offshore and sourced a supplier and we started wearing them and we we're just getting so many comments on them. We, we felt really like out there when we we're wearing them, like mm-hmm. we renegades, like we're these crazy guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so really cool. And um, yeah, we just couldn't believe how much they changed the look of your shoes as well. Like you'd wear one pair of shoes for two weeks and just change the laces and feel like you had a new pair of shoes each time. So Fascinating. And, and isn't it amazing when you have an idea, you don't realise the other uh, outcomes or benefits that are going to come from that idea. You think you're just changing the look of a shoe, but all of a sudden you're changing how someone feels, you're giving a uh, shoe extended life, life cycle. Exactly. Um, and that was the thing that stood out the most was just the feeling you got when you wore them. Like I always talk about, the feeling when you walk out the door 
in the morning with your car laced on. You feel like it's just not a normal day. You feel a bit different and you feel like a maverick. And that's exactly what we, our whole brand is about. And that's all we talk about. I mean, they are good quality laces. They're 100% cotton with a wax finish. Mate, they're beautiful. But, Thank you for sending me all these samples. They, they oh, are genuinely, um, they are. They, I mean, there is a quality about them that. Yeah. Um, I mean, they certainly are high quality. But the thing we talk about the most above that is just the feeling that they give you. And like I said, that gives people an emotional connection. People use them as a form um, and, a, and, a, and a way to express themselves as individuals and they're not just part of the herd. They are unique individuals wearing coloured shoelaces and it's just amazing that something so simple as like a piece of cotton with some colour on yes. it can, can give people that feeling, but I guess that's what it's all about. It is day, what it's so. all about. You, you, when you started wearing them and before you kind of said that we're going to do this as a business, when you started wearing them and lots of people are commenting, feeding back to you, I guess you were probably asking, hey, would you buy them? If, if we made them, would you buy them? Yeah. And people and were it, saying it, yes. Oh, I mean, most people just thought we were off our heads yeah. and that we were just uh, – it was, it was a stupid idea. And I think <laughs> – um, uh, yes, a lot of people said, yeah, it might work out. Um, some people said, yeah, I would buy them, but it was definitely a minority. Interesting. Um, but we still sort of went with it because I think if some people don't like your idea or if they almost hate your, your brand or your business, I think on the flip side, someone's going to absolutely love it. So uh, they're, I not agree. For, they're not for everyone and they're not meant to be. If everyone was a maverick, then the word maverick doesn't exist. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a person who does the things differently and is eccentric. So, Well, therein lies, we, therein lies a problem too, Luke. You know, you don't want to sell too many. I know, it's sort of like we don't want to go mainstream, but they are quite a low unit price, so we do need to move a fair few of them. But, um, yeah. I mean, they're not for everybody, and some people still, when we tell them that we have shoelaces, they just you know scoff or laugh or whatever, but I think that's great. I mean, it's a polarising thing, and I think that is that is, that is a good thing. And uh, I know Jaden has said, you know, if, if you tell people your business idea and they don't think you're crazy, then you're not thinking big enough. And I sort of believe in it in some ways. So. Yeah, too true. Mm. So so just for this, this is a uh, obviously an audio program and your product is very visual. Just That's explain, right. we're, we're beautiful wax, uh, they're beautiful colours, the, the laces are waxed, so they have this wonderful kind of, I don't know, high quality sheen, quality sheen yep. feeling and about it them. them. Yep. You've got a, it comes on a lovely laced through um, a really nice stock, a kind of sort of business card almost, isn't it? Like- yeah, it's a, it's a paper stock called Reeves, which is a beautiful paper stock, quite expensive. But, mm-hmm. I mean, that's, again, if we're going to try and elevate a functional object into a desirable, I guess, fashion accessory, mm-hmm. we need to treat the packaging and everything that goes along with that as like as art. Like, it's, uh, it's, it's beautiful stuff. We package them beautifully. And we give them all names as well and personalities. So, again, uh, you know, a colour, people feel different ways about colours. So, we look at the colours that we're getting we think who reminds us of that colour and we name the lace after that person. We write on our website a short bio about that lace colour yeah. so people can connect with that. And we get people buying the laces purely just based on the name sometimes, yeah, which yeah. is hilarious. So, yeah. And, and uh, price-wise, uh, again, pricing is just one of those ongoing dramas that all small business yeah. owners struggle with. How did you go about pricing? Uh, that was a real, That was probably the hardest part, to be honest, um, when we started up was coming – up with the price that we're going to go at because we did want to position them as premium because they are premium mm-hmm. and we have put a lot of effort into uh, the business and the brand. So we, yeah, we we're sort of thinking at one stage around sort of five to six dollars, mm-hmm. um, but we've come up with seven ninety five. So still under ten dollars. You can do three for twenty. So we do three yeah. packs. You pack um, so it I mean, up. yeah, I mean they're still cheap, but there's still a lot for laces if that makes sense. So we sort of tried to find that happy. Happy medium. We have found some other shoelace companies uh, around the world. Um, there's a couple of them who do sort of really premium dress laces, they call them. They sell them for like nearly around 20 bucks, mm-hmm. which we just think's a bit bonkers. But uh, yeah, that was that was a hard hard call. But I think we've made the right call by the reaction so far. So, uh, have you thought of doing? Um, I remember talking on a previous episode about this a coffee uh, cafe in South Melbourne, Saint Ali. Yep, no, you know, yep. Yeah, know it. And they did the $25 cup of coffee about 18 months ago. Got a front page of the Herald Sun. They ended up yep. getting about half a million dollars of media coverage. I'm not sure how many cups of coffee they sold at 25 bucks, but, you know, it was a position. I reckon it was probably a positioning play on their behalf. Have you thought about the $100 pair of laces? We have thought about it, yeah. And I think, I mean, yeah, to get that sort of word of mouth remarkableness, hmm. maybe it might not be a bad idea. We even thought about like a full. 
I guess, experience where we can, you know, come in and choose your colors for you. So sort of almost trying to make a service yeah. out of the product as well. If you really want to pay 150, 200 bucks, we will, you know, hand pick your laces for you and come check out your shoe uh, collection yeah. and, and this sort of stuff. Because I think, yeah, there's always a market and if only, you know, 5% of the people that you've got buy that $100 lace or that experience, that's still a lot of money. Totally. So. And you could have custom. So the, the thing about that from a marketing point of view is if you are offering the $100 pair of laces or the custom laces or the yep. we come out and do the work for you type offer, then you're seven ninety five, which it feels to me like you're still kind of struggling with a little bit in your sense that you think that's expensive. That all of a sudden becomes really cheap. Oh, 100%. Exactly right. So yeah, it, it positions or repositions the whole, the whole costing structure. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. it's certainly something we're thinking about. I mean, it's just we've got so many ideas um, <laughs> all the time. It's just you know, how many minutes in a day? Which one do you go with? Is, is always the problem. I mean, I wish I could just work twenty four hours on Mavericks and just do all the things I wanted to do. But uh, oh, yeah, there's, there's lots of things up in the pipeline. That's man, sure. I was talking about this too. I had coffee with a, a friend of mine earlier this morning, and um, he we we're both talking about the the beauty that comes in businesses that just have one thing that they sell. Yeah, you know, it's like so for you as you just said. You know, imagine. If all you did every morning you got up and said, you know what, this morning, I'm just going to sell more laces in more clever ways <laughs> to more people and have more fun with that whole thing. Whereas you're torn, I'm guessing, between your laces, your Mavericks laces and your graphic design slash branding consultancy. Yeah, that's Where exactly do you put right. The energy? And, and, and yeah, uh, Jaden, he has his own graphic design business and I have my own branding and design agency with another friend of mine. So. It's it, it's it's hard, but I mean, we probably spent about two to three days on Maverick Slices, huh. and a lot of that's probably uh, out of hours in some ways. Yep. But um, yeah, I mean, it is the more Maverick Slices grows and succeeds, it constantly is this sort of tension between uh, where do you put your time. But um, we've, we've managed it quite well so far, and I yeah. still love my design and branding. Like I love dealing with people and clients and helping them. I'm so yep. passionate about that side of things. So, well, um, there'll be a decision point. There has to be a decision point at some time, and it may be that you know you become the Mavericks Laces guy, but uh, your design services are on offer at a at a big price because yeah. you've, you're responsible for. Um, I remember interviewing. Do, do you remember the um, early days of Twitter? There was the mm-hmm. the fail whale. Do, do you remember? Whale. Yeah, no, so I never saw it. Okay, so Twitter used to crash a lot in the first kind of 12, right, 18 really? months. And what you would get was this crazy little illustration, animated illustration of a whale. And it was called the fail whale. And yep. anyone on Twitter at the time, every, you'd see it every day. I ended up interviewing the um, designer of the fail whale because at yep. the time she was like famous. Wow, who designed that? And um, <laughs> uh, she, um, she subsequently got a lot of work and high paid work because she was the one who designed the fail whale for Twitter. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, yeah. So it's like same for you. You could be, you know, you, you get that Mavericks laces thing to a point where it's just, just rocking. You're like, wow, you're the guys from Mavericks. Can you design my packaging for this or whatever it is? Yeah, and, which um, I mean, it's already sort of started to happen in some instances with both our design businesses. We have had business come just purely from Mavericks laces, which is great. But uh, yeah, I totally get what you're saying that, if that is the path we go down, that that becomes the sort of the full time gig, but then sort of consulting it at a premium when Correct. I have time could be the outcome. But yeah, it's something uh, that I'll just sort of let happen organically. I think for the next next couple of years. Now, Luki, um, wrap some numbers around it, mate. Give us the scoreboard. When did you when did you launch Mavericks? We launched Australia Day um, 2012. Okay, so we're almost uh, four, almost three years, close to three years in. Yes, yeah. I think so. You're, yeah. yeah. I might have confused there, but yep. yeah. Yeah, well, I'm not my strong point, mate. <laughs> yeah, show, show me a spreadsheet and uh, <laughs> you need to call an ambulance. Um, now, uh, reveal as much as you want, hopefully everything. How many how many pairs have you sold? Um, staff, turnover, money spent on marketing. What do you got? Um, oh, that's a really good question with the laces, mate. I haven't looked at the reports for a while. We're probably around about, at the moment, probably... 10,000 laces a quarter. Um, so we're moving quite a few. I mean, our first order when we started up was like, I think 3,000 or something now, but um, I think about six months ago, we ordered 42,000 pairs. So we're hoping to get through all those within 12 months. Mm-hmm. Um, turnovers, six figures. I won't probably elaborate too much on that just yet. Oh, would that be low <laughs> six figures or like a high six figures? 
Oh, low-ish six <laughs> figures. Yeah, I mean we're not, we're yeah, not yeah. sipping uh, cocktails on the beach every day just yet. Yeah, yeah. But, um, <laughs> still wearing thongs. Yeah, exactly. Oh, well, yeah, no, no, no thongs, mate. No, no laces thongs. and thongs. Yeah, correct, correct. <laughs> um, and staff. Uh, we don't really have much staff at the moment. Got we're it. certainly getting to the point, though, where we are going to have to get some staff to, to keep things trucked along. Yep. I mean, to, to start with, we've just done everything ourselves, which has been a great experience to learn about the logistics of shipping the laces and all that side of things as well. Mm. Um, but now we're getting to the point where the, the time we are spending those two, three days on, on Mavericks needs to be the really valuable stuff, the stuff that's going to grow the business, not the yeah, things right. just to keep the, the clock ticking over. So we are going to bring on some staff shortly. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, we've had family helping us out a, a fair bit, which has been great. Mm -hmm. um, and what, what do you spend on last? marketing? Uh, not anything anymore. Love it. So when we started up, we didn't spend a cent. We just went social media, just flat out. And I think the beauty of our product is... It is so visual and we get lots of people, probably at least one or two people a day on Instagram tagging us with uh, a photo of themselves mm -hmm. wearing our laces mm -hmm. with hashtag Mavericks Laces, which gives us just heaps of content to keep keep using. And you know, I think if people are posting about something on social media off their own back about a brand, then that really always gets good yeah. results. Yeah, that's gold. It's just, it's just word of mouth in, in a digital forum. So Okay, so you've created that scoreboard's come about. You've got, you've got your online store. Uh, you have yep. got retailers. Um, yeah, so we've just got just over 65 stores uh, stocking Mavericks laces at the moment. Probably the biggest name being Country Road in Australia. Nice. Um, yeah, we probably want to go any bigger than that, I don't think. We don't look at going to any of the majors. How, how, um, did, how did Country Road come about? Uh, Country Road, overseas listeners, how would you describe that? It's... Um, it was sort Whoa. of, I guess, a, a, an apparel label to start with, but they're sort of branched out into homewares and all type of stuff now. And it's kind of been... like, a, a, it'd be a rung below, oh, no, probably, yeah, rung below Ralph Lauren. Yeah, yeah, rung below probably. And they've sort of, I guess, um, they've sort of been reinvigorated in the last few years, I think, Country Road. They've really I done agree. some cool stuff. And So how'd you I get in there? They just approached it. So we got nice. lots of press when we started out and on some pretty cool sites like the design files and broadsheet and all those sort of cool sites, which was great and gave us huge exposure. And then we just got lots of people approaching us and one of them happened to be the men's fashion designer for Country Road. Mm -hmm. And he wanted to yeah get our, our laces into the store. Um, I think we're the first label that hasn't been Country Road to be stocked in Country Road, which is a pretty cool achievement. That's a so, big, mate, that's a big claim. Uh, for the first non-Country Road brand to be stocked in Country Road yeah, uh, so, under your own brand. So they exactly haven't white, right. you haven't white labelled it. No, I haven't white-labeled it, so they are Mavericks in there. And, um, well done. Yeah, that, that's been really good. And then, you know, we still talk to them about what's coming up for the next season's colours and what we can, you know, provide them. They smash uh, you on price? No, they've been pretty good. I mean, yeah, I don't want to talk out of school, but they did, <laughs> you know, try and squeeze us a little bit, but we, we held firm, so that was a, a bit of a learning in itself. But, um, yep. no, they've been really good to deal with and, you know, been a huge, huge um, avenue to awareness for us as well by Ben Stockton Country Road and... Yeah, we've got lots of sort of small retailers around Australia that sort of, you know, unique gift stores and lots of shoe stores, obviously. And we've sort of expanded a little bit into New Zealand and we've got, I think, eight stores now in South Africa, stocking us, and some in the States and some in the UK. But we're really looking at um, next year trying to go over to the States and, and really hitting that market. So, so he, here's the thing, Luke. Um, yep. I'm guessing uh, the competitive landscape is about to heat up because – as you get more successful, in come the competitors. Not exactly. not a hard at, at a product level, and this is again comes back to emotion and branding. At yep. a product level, pretty easy to copy. Oh, hundred hey? percent. I mean, we've we've had problems in the past for sure. I mean, we just found the other day uh, a brand called Pilgrims, I think it was, over in Norway or something with the exact same tags, the Whoa. logo was the exact same font, all this sort of stuff, exact same colours and. It, I mean, that, that's tough to, to handle. I mean, Jaden gets really fired up about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. I sort of tend to not get as fired up about it. Because, What's the Jay do? Give us a give us uh, a. Uh... He just sort of gets onto the Facebook and leaves a few, <laughs> leaves a few <laughs> comments on their page and gets a few mates around. We know where you live, <laughs> hey, you Vikings. You might be Vikings, but we're I don't know. Yeah, he calls in calls in the heavies on on the social media to uh, to get on them. But uh, yeah, look, I mean, there's not there's only so much you can do about that. At the end of the day, I, I take it as a compliment more than anything that we're doing something. Well, right if you can and... take energy from it, and you know, 
if we get a bit woo woo, go, you know, that empowers you to go, okay. So uh, people like it enough to copy it, exactly. put their own skin in the game. Um, we're just going to do it a whole lot better. You've got first, um, have you got first, um, well, it's not first user advantage, but have you got, um, you're, you're the first in the marketplace here. Yep. Um, were you the first in the world to do something like this? Or No, I mean, well, Colour Shows has been around, you could buy them at supermarkets and Mr. Minute and stuff forever, but uh, yeah. I guess we were sort of one of the first, um, definitely the first in Australia to really push it hard mm. and like go, we love shoelaces, we obsess with shoelaces, we sell them. Um, but we did find after we started up a place, in, there's a couple of places in the States who are doing something quite similar. Mm-hmm. Um, but very different sort of brands and different price points. So that didn't worry us too much. But definitely the first in Australia. And, um, yeah, that's that's been a huge advantage. And right. Yeah, with these sort of, I guess, not copycats, but other competitors popping up, like you said, it just pushes us harder to push the brand even further and come up with new innovative ideas to keep people interested and to keep reinforcing our brand message of being a maverick mm-hmm. is the sort of the unique thing that will keep us, um, I guess, apart from these competitors going forward because no one has our, our story. Or, or an emotional connection. I used to have an old Range Rover, Luke, and uh, if you saw another one approaching you on the road of a similar vintage, you'd kind of just either give them a nod or, you know, a couple of hands <laughs> up, put the hand up, give them a little kind of salute. Uh, yep. w- w- when you see, uh, d- d- when two Mavericks kind of approach each other on the street, is there like a, is it a face off or is it a high five? Oh, or? I'll, I'll, I'll hope there's a bit of a secret handshake. I mean, that's what, be, that's what I'll be looking for. We do have a little logo on. The plastic bits on the end, which are called the aglets of the laces. So, I've been known to at pubs sometimes be sort of down on my oh, knees yeah. looking at some bloke's shoelaces just to see if the, if yeah, the that's little symbols there. But before I approach him, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> yeah, look, I think people, our tribe's pretty strong, and they all sort of do talk to each other. And I think yeah, some people. Uh, if they did see each other in the street, it would probably be like a little little wink and a nod, I'd like to think. Love it. You talk about, um, and, and again, um, handling those competitors, one of the things you talk about is everything about the Mavericks brand goes that extra 1%. And I yep. I love that extra 1%. I think there's oh, magic in it. Um, give us some examples of how, how you do that. Um, well, basically, any time uh, our audience is going to come in contact with our product or our, our online store and retail stores, we just try and treat that as an opportunity to do something extra and to, I guess, surprise or delight the, our audience. So even little things like um, we have Shopify for our online store, which is a really great mm-hmm. back end um, to use to start up an online store. And that provides you with email templates. So when an order comes through, it automatically sends an order to the customer saying, here's what you've ordered, thank you for your order, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. And a lot of businesses will just put their logo at the top of that, whereas uh, – we said, well, you know, people just bought some laces from us. This is a really important moment. We need to do something special here. So we wrote a whole fanciful story, just probably, you know, just taking the piss mm-hmm. about, uh, you know, your laces at the moment have been um, transported by pygmies in the Amazon jungle to try and find some killer beeswax to, yeah. to wax your laces. Yeah. They'll then be flown by helicopter to our huge dispatch warehouse where our uh, laces packing ninja does backflips and all this sort of stuff and just completely fanciful. And then obviously underneath that it has the – this is what you ordered and here's the cost and here's yeah. how long it take. But the amount of people that email back to us to the order confirmation email saying, wow, that just made my day, or people share that on social media. I mean, any time you're talking to your audience, you just got to go that extra 1% and give them something special to tell their friends about, I think. That's what we always say. Well, so. I love it. And, I, and I'll give you a couple of other examples that you do because you've sent me some laces in the post. Uh, yep. Your extra 1% is wonderful, beautiful, beautiful uh, envelope uh, that it comes yeah, in. Yeah, that's like, actually – yeah, we commissioned that illustration from an illustrator in New York oh, wow. to, to help launch our spring range of colours. She did a custom illustration of Melbourne in springtime and envelope because before that we'll just send them out in white envelopes and we said again, well, this is an opportunity – the first time it arrives and someone gets to hold the package, it's got to be a special moment. So well, exactly. I mean, so. A, I don't want to throw it out. B, uh, I went down and showed my daughter who yep. loves it. She's into Frankie magazine and all that lovely design oh, yeah, stuff. Fantastic. So yep. looks like that. The other thing you do, and again, listeners, this is simple stuff. Like, this is not brain no, surgery. Um, uh, the, the the label that you've printed my name and address on, it's got your, your you know lovely branding on. It's not just like a one you punch out of a bubble jet printer. Um, no. There was a postcard that came came with it saying thank you for your order with some you know again funky copy some stuff uh, for example uh it says so look down take a moment and give yourself a fist pump on the inside you little rebel 
So, you know, just stuff <laughs> like that is just like it, it It brings it all together. As you say, builds the personality. You feel as though you're a part of something. You are giving people a reason to share. Yeah, um, that's the main thing. Yep. Yeah, gosh, it's just, uh, you know, when you see stuff like this, um, I always use Apple as the kind of the kings of this where exactly right. yep. it's just this beautiful consistency and people go, oh, yeah, but that's Apple. They've got billions of dollars. Everything you've just shown me, I'm sure commissioning the illustration would have cost a bit of dough, but everything you're doing, we're not talking lots of dough. No, and it's just a bit of time. And, I mean, if you just got to put yourself in your audience's shoes and go, when I buy something online, I want the experience to be special, and if it's special, I'll tell my friends about it. So you just got to sit down and sort of map out that process and go, once they order until the time people get the package in the mail, how can we surprise and delight them along that journey? And you just got mm. to put a little bit of time into it. And like you said, most of the time it doesn't cost you anything to make people feel a certain way. you just got to put the put the effort in. And yeah. an extra 1% can go a long, long way. And if people are sharing on Facebook this email they got, I mean, that's just a huge yeah, huge opportunity for our for our brand. So yeah, yeah, totally agree. I've got a little joint venture for you. In fact, um, as of the, today, as we're recording this, I haven't put the episode uh, that I'm about to tell you to air. But funnily enough, uh, an upcoming episode is with a guy called Bart Atherinos. Right, he is a Melbourne based guy who has come up with a product called Innies. I double N I E S. Yep. And it is looks like a little clip that you would get on your bread and your loaf of bread. Yep. But it allows you to tuck your laces inside mm, your shoe. That's clever. Yeah, because yeah. I used to do that when I was when I was younger with my sort of uh, skateboarding shoes and stuff. We always tuck the laces inside. Well, he solved the problem of you having because you would stand on your laces tucked inside your shoe. Well, exactly. He solved that problem, and he's doing similar things. You know, again, personality, having fun, beautiful images, um, yeah, and making something yeah. out of nothing. And that's another key point that I think really sets our shoelace brand apart is the amount of effort we put into our photography. I mean, we've we've been known to do full day campaign photo shoots of scenes of people wearing shoelaces around the city and stuff, and people just think we're bananas putting that much time into it. But Mm. that's what sets us apart, and it's such a visual product. Your photography is absolutely crucial. Even the pro photography, we shoot the laces on shoes so people can see the difference they're making totally. to the shoes on the website. So, so yeah. um, Lugie, I was going to give you that. I'll give you that last tip before I let you go, mate. Um, going back to that wonderful page you have on your website, Lacing Styles, where you yep. literally cover style after style after style of how to tie your laces differently. Um, yep. It's. I, I wonder whether you would be better off doing each of those styles uh, one per page. Uh, yep. Certainly, a lot better for Google searches because when people are searching for a particular style, or you know, you can have a whole lot of pages on your website about how to tie shoelaces. Whereas, totally. right, whereas right now you've only got one long one. Yeah, that's a great point, and I've got some ideas around that as well. That if you know one of them is called the Commando, uh, you have the page for the Commando style, and then if somehow people can hashtag Commando on Instagram, that would get pulled in down to the bottom of the page photographic examples of people wearing that uh, style would mate, be really cool. You are onto it. You're a step ahead. <laughs> so many <laughs> ideas. <laughs> hey, Luke, Luke Shoknecht from Mavericks Laces. Uh, I love what you're doing, mate. Thanks for, uh, thanks for bringing it to my attention, and I wish you guys so much success for the future. Thanks so much for having me on the show, Timbo. It's been, a, been an absolute pleasure. I've been listening for a long time now, and uh, it's a real thrill to be on here, and keep doing the great work, mate. What about that, team? That right there is Luke. The shoe nerd. Love a good shoe nerd. Hey, here's my top five learnings very quickly from that interview because we have still got five uh, learnings to cover from my uh, speaker's retreat. Whew, what a show. And by the way, these learnings are brought to you by the very good folks at Net Registry for all your online marketing needs. Number one, build emotion into all your marketing touch points. Go and have a look at uh, Maverick, mavericklaces.com.au. Check out the website. Check out the packaging. Check out the emotion in the copy. It's red hot. Number two, don't worry about your competitors. Stop it. Turn that energy into telling your story in an even better way. Yeah? Hey, when I see business owners focusing on competitors and getting annoyed when they do stuff that they shouldn't be doing. It's like, get on with telling your story much better. Number three, there's no business in the world that can't be made interesting. Listen up, accountants. And uh, didn't we find out that last week with um, Bart from Innies? Hey, there's two two shoe episodes in two weeks. What's going on there? Very soulful. (laughs) Boom, boom. 
Uh, number five, have a helpful website. Check out uh, mavericklaces.com.au and he's got all these lacing styles happening. You can sh- find out how to do a commando, t- uh, commando tie or a bow tie, all sorts of different ways of doing your shoes up. And I do love a helpful website. Number five, social media. But now, Luke didn't talk about this, but um, I'm just noticing more and more social media buttons in your footer of your website, not your header, right? You know, if you've got your YouTube button in the in the header of your website up the top, people click on that. Unless you're nailing YouTube, they're going to be watching cats fall off ladders before you can say, geez, that was a good interview with that shoe nerd. All righty, after that very abrupt finish, I hope you did enjoy that interview, by the way, with old Lukey. If you did, head over to smallbusinessbigmarketing.com and um, leave a comment in the show notes of episode 221. I love that. Hey, uh, back to the speaker's retreat. Five more learnings from my time away with some, by the way, some of Australia's um, biggest, most influential keynote speakers. It was a big table team. Uh, Number six, too often we become tellers, not sellers, right? Too often we talk, 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 talk when we're in front of a client or a prospect and don't listen enough. Become a seller by listening and not a teller. The more you talk, the more you are stopping your prospect from giving you some hints as to what they're looking for. Yeah, Listen more. Number seven, there's only two ways to measure the success of any great business, return clients and referrals. I like that. We were talking about how we measure the success of each other's businesses and um, it really did come down to that. How many repeat? How much repeat business are we getting, and how often are we being referred on to others? And we talked a lot about ensuring that we are referable by giving people, you know, actually letting people know exactly what it is we do, and and telling them, you know, going as far as being literal and telling them how to talk about our businesses, and in this case, about our keynote presentations. I like this one. Number eight. Tip number eight from my speaker's retreat, floss one tooth. (laughs) What does that mean? We're talking about um, writing, and some of us have writer's block every now and then, as does everyone else. And one of the guys there talked about uh, floss one tooth. And what he meant by that was write 100 words a day. And once the floss is in your mouth, you're likely to floss more than one tooth. So if you can write 100 words a day towards a book or towards a blog post, then you know you what? You're probably going to get to that 100 words and go, yeah, I've got another 100 in me, maybe another 100. And before you know it, you've written 500. So floss one tooth a day. The, the floss one tooth a day principle, I like that. Number nine, don't work with idiot, idiots. <laughs> like that one. Why? Because they suck your energy. They get in the way of doing business with people that you love. Life's too short. Plus, if you do work with idiots, it puts a negative flavor inside the business, your staff. If you've got staff, they sense it, and it just kind of puts the whole, I don't know, doing business into a a dark space, not a light space. Fill that space with great people. We can't pick and choose our clients all the time, but if you can, have a no-idiots policy. And number 10, sometimes our cups are full. Yeah, we talked about this. We're saying, you know, sometimes you're just just overloaded with work. So, so are our clients. So are our audiences. So are our prospects. So we talked about having the idea, we talked about just being cognizant of how the people in our audience feel because sometimes we're just tired, yeah? So have a greater sense, a greater awareness of how those around you are feeling. And in your case, it might be the people walking into your shop or coming to your website or hearing you speak. But sometimes our cups are full and we need to acknowledge that. So they were 10 learnings from what was an amazing, amazing two days. And I will, um, if you like them, I won't just go ahead and share more. If If you did like them, leave a comment in the show notes, episode 221 at smallbusinessbigmarketing.com. Right, motivational marketing quote of the week. This one is from Henry Ford. And he said, if I asked my customers what they wanted, 
they would have said a faster horse. <laughs> like that. If I asked my customers what they wanted, they would have said a faster horse. You know, go ahead and ask your customers what they want. Do a bit of research. Survey them. Get a sense of the lay of the land. But you don't have to listen to everything they say. I'm not sure the customer is always right. You know, have a listen and then listen, most importantly, to what your gut's saying. What's your instinct telling you is the right thing to do? That is the marketing quote of the week. Well, team, I reckon that is about it. I feel like I've been talking a bit quietly today. Have I? Don't know. I feel like the family's listening at the door. <laughs> They probably are. I'm going to walk out of here and they go, ah, Timbo Reed. No, they better say dad instead. Um, big show next week. Big show, lots of big shows coming up. Some very cool guests in the pipeline. If you like what you hear, head over to iTunes, leave a review over at Small Business Big Marketing. Just Google marketing on iTunes. I'll pop up number one more often than not, but I'd love you to do that. It boosts my ratings and my ego. <laughs> hey, um, join the forum. I'd love to see you inside. I'd love to have a chat with you. Head over to crankmymarketing.com and uh, you'll be in there so quickly. It takes about a minute to join. And I think that's it. You've got work to do. I've got work to do. I hope you can implement something that I spoke about in the last, yeah, what are we up to? About 50 minutes, 60 minutes. And... Uh, take action. If you ever do take action from an idea that I have shared or one of my guests has shared on this show, I would love to hear about it. Love to hear about it. So head over to smallbusinessbigmarketing.com and leave a message for me. I just love the idea of you taking action because that's what this show is all about. There's no shortage of ideas in the world. But there is a shortage of action takers in this world. And I reckon because you're listening to this show, you're an action taker. Am I right or am I right? Okay, I'm now rattling. I'm Timbo Reid. I'm in Melbourne, Australia, if you need to know. This has been the Small Business Big Marketing Show. May your marketing be the best marketing and bye for now. You've been listening to the Small Business Big Marketing Show with Tim Reid. Want more marketing goodness? Then visit smallbusinessbigmarketing.com.